asking the question on how can amateur radio help first responders. So today we're going to focus on the specific area of situational awareness. How can we help uh, in emergencies and disasters? So we're focusing today on two uh, systems, the uh, Amateur Packet Reporting System, APRS, and the WinLink, which, uh, which is an RF-based email system. And you can see here, this is the resources that we have for today. So APRS has an architecture that allows messaging with all kinds of, of information. Most people know it as a GPS location service, and that's very useful. But if you look here in, in the screenshot, it's used for weather information, telemetry, all sorts of uh, activities, and it can work in three different modes, which is important for us to know. Point to point, it can work between two radios with no other infrastructure. You can also work as a digipeter, your traditional digipeter, and with the internet, through an iGate. If you go to APRS.fi on the internet, that is what you'll see. They aggregate all those packets, they capture them, they bring them to the internet, and they show you the full picture. It's, it's something, it's a system that's been proven, it's very robust uh, in, uh, for emergency situations. The other uh, part that we're going to demonstrate today is WinLink. WinLink, uh, most amateurs know it from the HF side, of, uh, of, of things, but it's also uh, available in the VHF, very useful. Also, it can work point to point with digipeters or with internets. Your servers, your mail servers are accessed through the internet. But it's also very flexible, and you can actually have an off the grid mail <coughs> server for, uh, for WinLink. So these two techni uh, techniques and systems have been proven. Uh, and uh, so we're just going to show how we can play with them today. So our, our, as you might have heard, our scenario, basically we're pretending that the retro storm has just blasted through the area. The calls for help, assistance, has first responders overwhelmed. And they're asking amateur radio uh, folks to help out, just go out to and say, this, uh, this road has flooding, or there's a tree, or uh, there, are, there are resources needed in this shelter, which is something that would be typically our, our role as, as, a, as an assistant to the first responders. So we've had uh, Ellen uh, start uh, the exercise, making the call over the uh, repeater, giving the instructions. So now we're going to see how things are going. So we might be, you might hear her talk uh, while I'm, uh, Operating, but I want to show first APRS. Let's see. Let's see what we have here in APRS. We are showing packets, objects that have identified themselves by RF only. So we've cut off the internet to show you a real operating, the performance of a, of a system. So you will see they have all sorts of different uh, icons for the function. So we have. At this point, two volunteers. We have a number one and number two. I've actually changed their uh, their icon. Number one, that is Paul, and three are QB. So I don't know if you can see. If you want to get KB3 closer to see all sorts A of information. We know that he we can reach him on 146.955. That's a good. I actually have to do that. We know how to get to him via voice in addition to digital. Have some information on how long ago we heard from him. Uh, we can uh, track him. I'm going to save his tracks. And what we can do is when he's done, he's driving around surveying damage. <laughs> when we're done with the exercise, his track can be stored. We can forward that via WinLink. We can bring it up. I can actually, it's a GPX format. You can send it. Guess what? Google Earth Pro, you click on it, it says, I know what that is. It brings it up, it brings the whole track. And you can even animate it to make a little animation show. Uh, all these tools, very friendly, and they're uh, 
and they're free. These are free, free tools. APRS, IS has been around almost two decades, I believe. Um, so the icons, they're not the 21st century, but they work and uh, it's reliable. So I'm going to try to send a message. Another thing that we don't know is that usually use is that you can send short messages. So I'm going to say. This is KC3MJV, affirmative. <coughs> so I'm, I'm sending him a question. So, hi, Paul, how is the shelter at Damascus High School? This that's is part of his route. He's going to stop at Damascus I'll High School. Voice message. Is, is, is a, a shelter, exercise. designated shelter area. So you would want to know, okay, are there people there? How many, you know, your logistics. Is there food? Is there water? Things like that. So you actually can send short messages through APRS, separate from your voice. Okay. So I can, I can follow him. If I have a multi-screen environment, like a, maybe an EOC or some other type of operational center, I can actually follow those vehicles of importance and put them in that screen and then have the general uh, situational awareness of the whole area versus specific uh, assets. This is an exercise. So APRS is free, the software uh, is free. Uh, I've got with, your with some basic training sessions. Thank you for the information. It's very accessible uh, to learn exercise. and use. Um, I have at home a setup, something similar like this with a tripod. I actually have some uh, fiberglass glass so I can raise, I have a, a disco antenna. Not anything super, uh, but I can raise it 15 to 20 feet. And with RF only, I can monitor most of Central Maryland, Northern Virginia, and go into uh, Delaware. Sometimes I can get some packets way off from Pennsylvania. So it's something that is very feasible. So this is an example of a, a system that we can set up in our homes. It would be great if we could all have that capability because we can actually create a distributed uh, network of, of volunteers. You know. So APRS on the frequency in North America is 144.39 megahertz. Now, for those organizations that, want, if you want to have a little bit more control, run like different kind of scenarios like we do, but maybe you want to do something that terrorism or uh, something more, uh, you know, nuclear uh, material, Alpha, something a little Bravo, bit three, more that you don't Zoom. want to this necessarily share Charlie with the whole world. Three, Mike, Julia, All this works if you just change the frequency of operation and you automatically create a subnet. So as an organization, you can create your own uh, more private, I would say, uh, training scenarios. You can do that. So it's not tied to a specific frequency. Today, are you using the uh, standard computer frequency, the standard APRS frequency, or yes. are we doing our own? Okay. Yes, no, today we're using the 144.39. And everything we see on the screen, you either receive directly oh, from the message. sender or from a digital computer, is that correct? Yes, we're RF, RF only. Okay. And it's very easy, like for example, this software, there are two, um, two points, boxes I have to check, and I'm totally integrated with the internet. I can bring internet uh, packets in, and not actually become uh, uh, an eye gate. So if we're working in an area and there's not that much coverage, I can actually take those packets, digipeat, and also share them. Another thing is that all these packets, A, B, all these packets three, uh, can be saved. B, Z, K, C, so for three, example, MJB. all the GPS locations uh, that are specific target, report. Over. I can save them, and then I can have them uh, there. The messages can be saved. Uh, maybe some organizations, you know, audit or after an incident, hey, what happened? You know, lessons learned. All that data is saved. You can actually pull that. Uh, for most hams, we don't, but an organization might be interested in those features. Now, uh, this let's is an go exercise. for one more time. Please. This is an exercise. Here's just an example of the messages of the log. There's a lot of uh, header information, 
but you can track the diff if you have different messages going back and forth. You have a, a, a text file with that information, so you can actually go back and, and review. So it's much slower than what we're used to today. We're spoiled, but we have to think in the case of emergencies, it's not the volume. There's a lot of value in those small number of characters. Uh, hey, we're okay, or running out of gas, or water, or can't find so and so, right? They're small size with a lot of importance. Uh, so this system also can work point to point, just between two radios, you don't need all the infrastructure. Also, DigiPeter. Also, with mail servers connected to the internet, but we can also have your own mail servers, totally separate. So it's very flexible. Again, very robust. Uh, you can send emails. You can send attachments. Uh, so let's see. We've asked for some reports. Weather reports. So let let's see if uh, what we have here. So. I'm going to try to connect, and this is live. It was working before, so see, hey, there's a node in Rockville that we have a very good signal. But I'm going to show you, even the system will tell you what are the different repeater, the different nodes in your area. So I can I can try. If one doesn't work, I can go to the next. I don't know if you can see you can see that. Right, so I'm going to go and start. And it's going to sound like the old school dialogue. Let's see if, let's see if, uh... So I'm actually going to, right now, I'm, I'm going to actually Vic, WB to you. He actually has a standalone email server in his apartment. And he said, I have a message for you there. Why don't you check it? Okay. So we're actually we're doing DigiPeter. I'm actually bouncing off one uh, off of Rockville, where he's in Gaithersburg. Just because line of sight, there's a couple of buildings in, in our way. We can't do that. So let's see if we can uh, get that. And then we'll go to another server. Uh, Okay, so it's telling me it has one for a severe weather report. Features, for example, you can request different reports uh, like weather. You can actually get weather facts from NOAA. Small compressed images. Uh, as you know, it's slow, so you, you don't want to put your high-resolution photos, push them through. It'll, you might as well go to sleep and wake up tomorrow to, to get them. Okay, so we have. It says we have one. Road and that the roads are impassable. Let's this see here, drive. one. One came in. So we have a severe weather report. Status, WBTU. Gatorsburg. It looks like he used, he might have used a template. There's a flood, no flood. Let's see. It says limbs down. So this one was just from from Vic. That mail server is totally separate. The internet could collapse completely, and we just got email through a separate server. So I'm going to go through another one. And this one, the mail server is on the on the internet, but people have we've asked, we've sent them, they've sent it through RF. And this, and this is a system that you definitely can set up to run in unattended mode. Do we have a hardware PMC or are we using software? So, 
we're using right now hardware. We're using uh, on, on the Kenwood uh, the uh, the 710s. Oh, okay. uh, you can use it also with a signal link and uh, the sound modem software. Signal link is about 120, 130 dollars. Software is free. Uh, I've used both, but I like the Kenwood because the Kenwood is has the TNC internally. Uh, I like the Kenwood because it's very reliable. You know, the amateurs like to tweak and play things. There's a role for that, but when I hit that power button and I need it to work, this is a very nice setup. And there are some other other ones. So, so we're, using, we're using the hardware TNC here, but before I've tested from home with the laptop, the single link, the sound motor, which is free, and my little bow phone. And my, uh, and my uh in my kitchen.